Now, let's talk about the skin incisions that we place while doing an autopsy, right? The first and most common one that is used is known as the eye-shaped incision. These incisions are also known as primary incisions because it is the first incision that you will place on the body, okay? So, eye incision. Now, where does it extend to and where does it start from? Well, it's said to be a symphysis to symphysis incision. What that basically means is you're going from the symphysis menti to the symphysis pubis, right down the middle like this, right? However, I hope you've noticed that I have avoided the umbilicus. You will not cut over the umbilicus. Okay, and the reason for that is there is dense fibrous tissue which is under the umbilicus and while suturing the body back up afterwards, this dense fibrous tissue is very difficult to pierce and two, it causes a very jagged looking suture line and therefore may actually cause leakage when you're transporting the body later. Now, the second incision that we have to talk about is known as Y-shaped incision. Now, you might ask, we already have one way of doing it, why do we need a second one? Y-shaped incision is usually done when there is neck trauma. Okay, it is also sometimes called bloodless dissection. Okay, the reason is called bloodless dissection is because there is trauma on the neck. However, when we want to visualize the tissues in the neck, what we're going to do is first, we're going to open up the cranial cavity, drain all the blood from neck above outwards. Then we're going to open up the thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity, right, where in which, as you can see here, the incision is being placed from the ziphy sternum all the way down to the symphysis pubis and on either side it's being extended to the acromion process. Now here what's happening is blood is going to drain downwards, blood is going to drain upwards and what this is going to do is it's going to create a bloodless field in the neck. So therefore when you finally dissect the neck you will not get artifactual bleeding or contusions which make you think that this person might have been strangulated or might not have been strangulated also. So it is basically to avoid confounding of results or confound findings that you'll see in the neck area. So this is the reason why bloodless dissection is done. Now, another form of Y-shaped incision is known as modified Y. Okay, modified Y. Now, the reason it's called modified Y is because you're going to be placing an incision which extends from the suprasternal notch all the way down to the symphysis pubis, right? Suprasternal notch to the symphysis pubis, avoiding the umbilicus again, right? Umbilicus is avoided at every single midline incision. Keep this in mind. Then afterwards, you'll be placing another incision which goes across the clavicular, interclavicular line and that's usually up to the midclavicular point. And then it is extended upwards towards the mastoid, okay, on either side of the neck. The reason why this is done is because cosmetically it gives you a better looking outcome. So if in case they want to do an open casket funeral or there's going to be a public viewing, then it makes sense for them to go for a modified Y. However, modified Y and Y are used in the same case. And what cases are those? They are cases of neck trauma. Now, we have to discuss another type of incision, which is known as X-shaped incision. Now, this cruciate type of incision is placed over the back. Now, you might think almost all the findings are present on the front of the body. Why do I need to check the back of the body? Fair point. But this incision has a very specific use. Okay. It is used first and foremost in custodial deaths, right? Or to torture deaths. Now, keep in mind, when I say torture deaths, this could also follow interrogation which is done by the police, okay? So it is usually done in custodial deaths and torture deaths, okay? Now here what you're doing is you're placing an incision which extends from the tip of the acromion all the way down to the outer aspect of the gluteus maximus on the same side. Whereas opposite side, you have to do the same thing on the acromion all the way down to the outer aspect of the gluteus maximus. Okay, now actually what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to follow the bony prominences. So if you want to follow the bony prominences, then it's from the acromion process all the way down to the iliac crest actually, right? Some books will say that it can extend to the trochanteric point, but I think uh, iliac crest, superior point of the iliac crest is a better point to aim for because you'll be able to reflect much easier. There is another type of incision which is known as a T-shaped incision. 
Okay, let's go through a quick summary of what we've just discussed, right? Here, we learned about what exactly an autopsy is, where the first autopsy in India was conducted. We learned about the various types of autopsies and also the features of each of those autopsies, okay? Then we learned about primary incisions that are placed on the body. I, Y, modified Y and X. There is also a T-shaped incision that you should also possibly know about. Then, we learned about the various organ removal techniques from Virchow's to Gons to Letule's to Rokitansky's. Then we learned about individual organ dissection, where we learned about how the heart is dissected. You will dissect it along the inflow outflow method. Then we also learned about how you will actually open the head. So for the scalp, you'll use an intermastoidal incision, after which you will saw the skull open in a wedge shape, right? Sometimes using a striker saw, known as an oscillating bone saw. Then you'll talk about the brain, where how in most cases it's a fresh dissection, or in cases where you want to actually do the best possible method, you will keep it preserved in 10% formalin for around 2-3 to three weeks and then you will dissect it. In children, or in fetuses, sorry, you will be adding acetic acid, right? Then we discussed sample collection sites, the best sample collection sites for blood, urine, CSF, and also for DNA. Then we talked about exhumation, right? What exactly exhumation is, whose permission is required, who is supposed to provide an inquest, why it is done. Then we talked about second autopsy, we talked about obscure autopsy, and we talked about negative autopsy. Okay. Lastly, we talked about presumption of survivorship and presumption of death. Now, this brings us to the end of this session. I hope that this has been helpful.